Good afternoon, I'm Jim Freeman. First at four, recent flooding has left people asking the question, could my home flood this much again? That question is leading survivors to rethink their living situation. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox details how flood victims in Electric County met with representatives. Adding one stressor to another, flood survivors are working with the Kentucky Division of Water to rebuild safely with a permit. The flood has caused Letcher Countyans to take many steps in order to reach some form of normalcy again. Flood survivor Sandra Banks says the problem is a lot of people are not exactly sure what all needs to be done. We heard all these rumors about if you're in the floodplain, then you might not get a permit. And most people living in eastern Kentucky are in the floodplain because we're a valley. Banks also said getting a permit to live in a floodplain was not necessarily something people in the region thought they needed, but at least this gives victims some recognition. In Whitesburg, Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Thanks, Chandler. We'll have more on the floodplain meeting tonight at 6. Now, looking pretty good out there yet again on our Thursday afternoon. Yeah, it feels like a broken record, but it's the kind of record that I would like to stay broken for a little while. And I'm not talking about high temperatures. I'm talking about the beautiful weather. Outside, you see very few clouds, as a matter of fact, from our camera at the University of Virginia's College at Wise. Plenty of sunshine there, though you do notice a little haze. That is wildfire smoke from out west. It's been picked up by the jet stream and moved into our region. So that actually may help us with some beautiful sunsets tonight, but it may also hurt that air quality out there. So it's something we'll need to watch. Warmer than this time yesterday, upper 70s to near 80 daytime temperatures at the moment. Yesterday we were in the low to mid 70s. So yeah, getting closer to 80, but still those dew points in the upper 50s to near 60 comfortable yet again and we will continue to see the beautiful weather continue throughout the night you see satellite and radar not much to talk about as we run through tonight so we will continue to see absolutely gorgeous weather working through the rest of our thursday timing it out through the evening down to near 80 as we head into the next hour quickly into the upper 60s by tonight and low 60s overnight i'll have the details though on when we could see a return to some summer-like air. That's coming up in a few minutes. Jim? Thanks, Evan. We'll look forward to that uh, beautiful sunset uh, just after 730. College enrollment around the state is on the rise. The Kentucky Community and Technical College system saw a 3.5% increase in admission, and the University of Pikeville saw a 40% increase in the same time. Part of the reason for the big increase, a return to normalcy after the pandemic closed most schools. Then you have high schools that were, were closed. They weren't allowing uh, college representatives come in, talk to the students, and, you know, it, high school students is not likely to get on a Zoom and talk to a, a college representatives. Some schools in eastern Kentucky are dealing with lower than expected enrollment after the floods shifted many people's priorities. W WYMT's Keaton Hall will have more on that coming up at 530. President Biden says a tentative deal has been reached between the unions and rail companies to avert a major strike that could have halted the U.S. economy. The president called it a win for thousands of real workers, as well as the companies who will now be able to, quote, retain and recruit more workers. The agreement came around 5 o'clock this morning after 20 consecutive hours of negotiations at the Department of Labor. Last night was a uh, historic night for rail labor. Uh, we're very proud of what was accomplished. Uh, we wanted to take a few minutes and uh, or a few seconds and, uh, you know, thank uh, Secretary Marty Walsh. Deputy Secretary Julie Sue and, and definitely uh, President Joe Biden, uh, everybody pulling together to make sure that uh, we could get our members what they uh, what they deserve. The deal will now go back to the unions for a vote after which there will be a cooling off period of several weeks. The political fight between Republicans and the Biden administration over immigration is playing out between the states. Buses carrying migrants arrived at Vice President Kamala Harris's residence at the U.S. Naval Observatory in D.C. early Thursday morning. And dozens of people arrived on charter flights to Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts on Wednesday. It's all part of what Florida Governor Ron DeSantis calls a relocation program. CBS's Christina Hager reports from the Vineyard. Asylum seekers carrying what little belongings they have arrived outside the vice president's residence in Washington to the surprise of volunteers like Carmen Carrera. I think it's really messed up. These are human beings. They've been on the road for, I think, three days. 
Instead of Union Station, Texas Republican Governor Greg Abbott bust the migrants there over what he calls the Biden administration's inaction at the southern border. There's a legal way of doing this. Republican governors interfering in that process and using migrants as political pawns is, uh, is shameful. This woman, who arrived in D.C. Thursday with her husband, says her journey from Venezuela to the U.S. took a month and a half. To save her mother, she made a plan that come together to work to have the chance to help her mother in Venezuela. Volunteers on Martha's Vineyard also found themselves scrambling to help about 50 migrants flown here without warning Wednesday on the order of Florida's Republican governor. We're not a sanctuary state. What would be the best? is for Biden to do his damn job and secure the border. Some of the migrants say they were told they'd be given housing and jobs and raging Venezuelan activists in Florida. We demand him to stop using our pain, our suffering, and our desperation for his political gain. Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker, a more moderate Republican, says his administration will continue to support local officials as they address an ongoing humanitarian crisis. Christina Hager, CBS News, Martha's Vineyard. Since the spring, Republican governors in Texas and Arizona have transported several thousand migrants and asylum seekers to New York, Chicago, and Washington, D.C., all cities with Democratic mayors. In California, two people were arrested Wednesday in connection to the burglary of a representative's home. The incident happened on Friday at Karen Bass's home. Bass is also a candidate for mayor of Los Angeles. It comes after police identified the suspect's vehicle and license plate on the day of the crime. They later found the vehicle and arrested the suspects without incident. They're both charged with one count of residential burglary. Tens of thousands of mourners in London are spending long hours in massive lines to file past Queen Elizabeth's body. The late monarch is lying in state ahead of her funeral on Monday. The grief of a nation is measured in miles as thousands waited to enter Westminster Hall while the Queen lied in state. Like father and son, John and Nathan Beale, both combat veterans of the British Armed Forces. Well, we both signed an oath of allegiance to Her Majesty, you know, and I feel like tonight, today, is a chance, Just a to, chance to say that. goodbye. Yeah. yeah, to say, you know, say thank you so much. I think it will hit home when we actually go in. King Charles III spent the day privately in reflection for the first time since his mother's death. Tomorrow, he will travel to Wales to meet with Parliament. British Prime Minister Liz Truss is expected to meet with U.S. President Joe Biden ahead of the Queen's funeral on September 19th. That's what a number 10 source said earlier today. This will be Truss's first meeting with the U.S. leader since she took office last week. Russian President Vladimir Putin met this morning with Chinese President Xi Jinping in Uzbekistan. It's the first time they met in person since Russia started the war in Ukraine, and Putin said he values China's position on the conflict. The meeting follows a dramatic advance by Ukraine's army pushing back Russian troops. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says he intends to keep Russian troops on the run. This coming during a surprise visit to the recently liberated town of Izium. You see that Russia is destroyed, and you see the mass of the stretch again. But the main thing that we are coming back, and we are on the way to the end. The Russians held Kharkiv for more than six months. Even though Putin's forces have fled, there is always concern there could be some sort of retaliation. Last night, around eight Russian missiles hit a hydropower plant in Zelensky's hometown of Kriviv, of Kriviv, causing flooding in the area. The Ukrainian president was involved in a car crash in Kyiv on Wednesday. A statement from the president's press secretary says a car collided with the car of the president of Ukraine and escort vehicles. The statement also went on to say medics accompanying Zelensky gave emergency aid to the car's driver and transferred him to an ambulance. No serious injuries were found. Coming up on First at Four. After our fall preview earlier this week, summer is making a bit of a comeback. The latest is on the way. What he said, beautiful weather continues as we run through the rest of the week. Details coming up.